Come on in, everyone. Welcome to Covenant Christian Church, Wednesday Night Bible Study. Where our bishop is none other than the, the Shelia Garrett. Our overseer is Derek Garrett. Come on in. Praise the Lord. Hey, Bishop. Praise the Lord. We serve an awesome God. He is awesome. He is awesome. Yeah, yeah. He did it just for me. Good evening. Yes, yes. He did it just for me. Could you imagine? It's not too many people that do things just for us today let me get my shares out the way while others are logging in bless the name of the lord yeah yes 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 he is awesome yes 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 hallelujah hallelujah to the most high god yeah he did it just for me. Yeah. I'm in awe of you. You did it just for me. We got to take this thing personal, church. Yeah. It's marvelous what he's doing for others. But when he begins to work for you personally. Oh, yeah. It should cause a, a stirring in your spirit. It should cause a leaping in your belly. Giving you a reason and an unction to give him glory, to give him praise, to honor him. Why? Because he did it just for you. He had you in mind. He had me in mind. He did it just for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And tonight we're going to talk about that. We're, we're going to talk about why. We're going to talk about him doing it just for me. I want you to take tonight personal. I want you to, even though I'm going to be using the word us, 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 I want you to take it personal. And every time I say us, you say me. Yeah, yeah, make, make it real personal tonight. I promise you. I promise you this way. Hey, Elder Treywick. I'm going to give a couple of more minutes and then I'm going to get us get us right on. Yeah. I'm going I'm going to be jumping on right on in there. I'm get a couple more minutes. I just did some shares to give a couple more people a little bit more time to get on. Let me see. Yep, uh another another 3 minutes. Hey, at the council another two minutes give them some more give them give them some more let me see those hearts those thumbs up hallelujah 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 bless the name of our god he is doing great things i understand a songwriter when they say he is marvelous marvelous and everything he is doing is marvelous in our sight. I don't know about you. In spite of everything on the inside, my insides are overjoyed. I, I, I have this joy on the inside. No matter what's happening outside of me that wants to disrupt life, there's this joy on the inside that reels me back in when I want to zone out or reels me back in when I want to lose my temper or reels me back in when I want to forget the faithfulness of God. It reels me back in. Now I understand when they sung that song, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world cannot take it away. Yes, things happen. Circumstances arise. Situations are there. It, it, it is the inevitable. We will experience of the Lord it's a reminder that if he did it before he can do it again if he did it for you before there's no doubt he will do it for you again 
I, I've, I've, I've watched God work over and over and over and over again, not just in my personal life, not just in my life of testimony, but I've seen him do it in the lives of others. And as a result of that, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged to praise him in spite of what the world is saying, in spite of what's going on in the world today. You know why? We, we have the ability to impact this world to impact it can we change the situ the circumstances the situation of things absolutely not it has to come to pass however we can impact we can impact this world we can call those who are not following christ to become a follower oh yes we can with the joy that's on the inside of us hallelujah hallelujah so I'm going to go on, I'm going to get into tonight's lesson. Amen. I'm going to try to keep up with those who are coming on if I can. Uh something went on here. Okay. All right. So, I put in the description. I'm going to be in 2 Corinthians tonight. 2 Corinthians um 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 through 10. I'm going to be reading this uh, from the uh, New Living Translation. It's got to be enough, church. It, it, it's, it's got to be enough. It's got to be enough. We can stop searching. We can stop looking. We can stop rattling. It's got to be enough. Hey, Rosetta. Didn't I just talk to you? Yes, it's got to be enough. So 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verses 7 from the New Living Translation, and it reads as so. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh as a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So, now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses. And in the, and in the insults, hardship, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hey, Veronica Miller, oh my gosh, it's been a long, high school, as a matter of fact, it's been that long. Hello, Veronica. Um, Paul here, um, we're all um, well familiar, Paul wrote a, a, a good amount of the New Testament writings. Um, as a result of his writings, uh, we have learned so much as the body of Christ how to build one another up. But what but what I want to talk about now here is is how how we are going to be sustained and anchored in this hour, in this day, in this time, and all of this that we are in. Yeah, all of this. Um, Paul here is is had, had uh, um, a few verses up. Paul had received a revelation from God. And in that revelation, um, I could only imagine what God revealed to him. And it had to be something of significance because Paul kind of was told as, as to whether or not um, it was uh, fit for him to share, so to speak. And if he did, what kind of mindset would the people receive it? Um, as I was reading this, I, I thought about some of the personal encounters that I've had with God in over time. I'm um, struggling if, as if to, if I was to share it with others, because sometimes people can misconstrue how we convey information. And instead of recognizing the individual who is due the credit or the praise, they start looking at us. So we'll, 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 we'll accomplish some things. There's some victories that will take place or there's some, some, some foreseen things that are going to take place in our futures. And sometimes we can share that information and, and, and people will begin to start to give us credit, to accredit us. Um, 
Paul didn't want this to happen. However, this revelation was not revealed as a result for him to receive any credit, for him to receive glory from anybody. But on the contrary, he needed to use um, he needed to use this platform in order to show God's goodness, God's greatness, God's God's miraculous abilities in the life of those he loved. So Paul said that um, in revealing this 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 revelation, um, in order to keep him in line and check, he had to, he was suffering some things. It 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 was a it was a reminder of his need for God and his reliance on God's strength. So he says that as he was revealing this revelation that he received from God and when he was receiving this revelation, it was it was so intense. It was so in depth. Paul couldn't even Paul didn't even realize what dimension he was in. He didn't even know whether he was in, was he was alive or he was dead. Uh he he didn't know. But what he did know is that the revelation that God gave him was so significant. It was so meaningful. It was so powerful that he had to share it, but not to share it where it would have been all eyes on him. So he used this platform. And he said, as he was using this platform, in order to keep him from becoming puffed up or proud or 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 feeling as if he had accomplished something or feeling as if he had made it through something in and of himself. He said that he was given, he was given a thorn in his flesh. A lot of times, those of us who have this, who have this deep intimate relationship with God, God will show us and begin to reveal some things to us. And, and most of the time, it's not things that he wants us to keep to ourselves however when we go to convey God's message we have to be also very careful as to the motive and the intentions of our hearts as we're conveying the message so that when we're speaking on behalf of God or we're sharing some things of God or if God has called us to speak into somebody's life that we don't begin to 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 put ourselves up on this pedestal or allow others to put our put us on a pedestal that we need not be on. So Paul's reasoning for sharing the vision wasn't because he was trying to receive any recognition or he was trying to receive anything from others. On the contrary, it was not that he would receive glory, but that he can explain the purpose or explain why he was going through what he was going through and it's evident that paul was suffering and he was not suffering privately it is it is it's 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 evident in this scripture that whatever it is paul was going through it was on public display can i tell you can i tell you that that whatever it is you are going through and others are eyewitnesses as to your suffering do you know that it is not so that you can receive any type of recognition or that others see you in the suffering, but that the that the love of God is revealed? Does God want us to suffer? No, he doesn't cause suffering in us, but he'll use what we go through. He'll use our experiences. He'll use our circumstances. He'll use those things, not, not so that we are glorified, so that he is glorified and others are built up. No, we, we don't like to suffer. We don't like to go through things. But can I tell you this? That if we're suffering going and going through. And we are still in the land of the living. Do you know that those are, are, those, those are moments of testimonies? Because if, if your life has been anything like mine. I can tell you that in the midst of my suffering. There were times where I didn't feel as if I was going to make it out. And do you know others had no idea how I felt on the inside? However, they watched what I was going through. Even in the go through, they didn't realize how bad it felt. You know why? Because God was using what I was going through as an ability for me to testify to others. God was using what Paul was going through as an ability to testify to others just how good God is. So Paul says here, 
this he he goes he says um I, I was given this thorn in my flesh and, and and I really looked at that at that 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 one little statement he said I was given a thorn in my flesh he didn't say that he was inflicted with a thorn he didn't say that um a, a thorn was cast on him he said he was given which means that Paul embraced what he was going through he saw the thorn or the suffering he was going through as a gift Come on now, church. How many of us can say that our suffering, we, 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 we in, our, in, our, in our mind, in, our, in our, our, our human ability to reason, how many of us say when we're going through things that we see it as a gift or, or we see it as a, 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 as a pleasurable thing? We, no, most of the time we don't. When we're suffering and we're going through things, we see it as hard times we see it as difficulty but Paul said I was given meaning he saw it as an opportunity come on now suffering is an opportunity for the believer for the believer to be an eyewitness in the earth that God is alive and well and he is still performing miracles. He is still keeping his people, even in the worst of hours. So Paul says, I was given this thorn in my flesh. And a messenger of Satan was sent to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Now we all remember the story of Job, right? When the sons of God presented themselves in the presence of the Lord, that Satan, he also appeared, and he asked God for permission to go in and frustrate the life of Job. The enemy saw an opportunity. He saw an opportunity to try to frustrate the testimony of Paul. Now remember, Paul wasn't always Paul. Paul was formerly Saul, persecuted the church. Uh, he, he, he was formerly the one who killed the body of Christ. It, and when he was converted, many of them, many of the believers had a hard time accepting Paul because of his former life. You know, you believer, you know, there are still those who have a hard time accepting you as the, the chosen of God because of your former life. You know why? Because they can't relate to the experiences that you have uh, been intimate with as a result of God calling you out of who you are into who he is. So Paul says that the that Satan sent a messenger. The There will always be a constant reminder. The enemy is warring against our soul. He is warring for our soul in this hour. He already knows his fate. He also knows the fate of the believer. He knows the promises of God. Do you not know? He knows the promises of God. He has been where we are aiming to go. He's already seen what glory looks like. And know that he never has an opportunity to return to that place again. So what will he do? When we start going through things in our lives as believers, he will begin to whisper in our minds, why are you going through that? Oh, I thought God loved you. Ain't you supposed to be saved? Church people ain't supposed to experience that. D does he really love you? Yeah, I don't know about you. But even in Christ, when, when I, I face some of the hardest trials in my life, and I know God loved me. I know Jesus died for me. I know it was for me. I know it. I knew it was for me. Even in knowing it was for me, even in trusting God, the enemy still spoke. Do you think because 
you have the Holy Ghost on the inside that he's not going to still he's not going to still try to whisper in your ear. Come on now. The Bible says that the spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness. And when he was in the wilderness, he was tempted not of God. Who was he tempted by? Uh huh. The same Satan that sent the messenger your way to whisper in your ear while you're going through. To, to try to divert the plan that God has for your life. To try to snatch you away from destiny. To try to steal purpose. Yeah, he doesn't stop whispering because the Holy Ghost rests, rule, and abides on the inside. In fact, he began to speak even louder. You know why? Let me dig in. So, when Paul was talking about this thorn, he wasn't talking about a little poke, a, a, a little thumbnail. But in fact, the root word that Paul was talking about here was more like a tent stake. And I'm not talking about these little, these little inky dinky anchors they give you now with these little cheap tents. But you know how when they come and they put them really big circus tents down, they got them real thick nails and they bang it down. This is what he was talking about. He was talking about them big thick nails that's probably thicker than your hand. So that's excruciating suffering, excruciating pain. Paul, Paul was not talking about no light affliction. He was not talking about a small thing. And yet he saw it as a gift. Can, 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 we, can we honestly see suffering as a gift? Most people blame God when they're suffering. Most people blame others when they're suffering. But if we could ever, ever get to this point. If we ever can, can get to this point that Paul is, is, is in and say, this is a gift from God. It don't feel good. But Romans says, all things work together. Romans 12 and 8, all things work together. All things. All, even, even, even those painful things, they work. Why? Because like he says in Jeremiah, he knows the place he has for us. They're good and they're not evil. God has good intentions for us. He'll use the evilness of the enemy to bring about our good. He'll use the, the evilness of the enemy to launch us into purpose. Paul, Paul was on a mission to the Gentile believers. He was on a mission to draw those in, in, into the body of Christ. He was on a mission for those who were still lost. So this was not no light thing, but, but, but Paul saw it as a gift. And no doubt, it was God that allowed him to go through it at the hand of the enemy. Do you know God would allow us to suffer some things at the hand of the enemy? You know why? My God is bigger. My God is stronger. My God is higher than any other. How can we testify? How can we say he's bigger? How can we say he's stronger? How can we say he's greater than any other? Because I promise you the blows that the enemy be throwing? Uh-uh. If you got punched by the devil, I promise you it hurt. If you haven't, stick with Jesus long enough. I promise you he going to start swinging. And I'm warning you in advance. I don't care how you try to duck, run for cover, he going to connect. And when he connects, there's, there's no mistaking that he was present. When he comes in and starts swinging, he makes sure he do it in such a way that it tries to wreak havoc in your life. So even though Paul felt every blow, he embraced it. He embraced it. Is, is it easy? Is it easy to embrace suffering? Absolutely not. Mm -mm. Is, it, is it easy to embrace? And from, absolutely not. 
No, 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 no. It's, it's not easy. But Paul says this. He says, in that, it wasn't easy. You know why? Because it says that Paul sought God on many occasions to take that thing away. So that blow, what he was going through, it was not easy. Yes, Paul, the writer of, of, of two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul, yeah, that Paul. Yep, yeah, mm-hmm, that Paul. Yep, that Paul. He was in so much agony that he sought God on numerous occasions. Let me tell you something. There are those who say that we are not to go to God over and over and over and over and over again about the same subject, but Paul begged to differ. Paul went to God as many times as necessary until God responded. See, it, it's obvious that that God didn't respond the first, the second, or it, it, the Bible says three times, but that's not the literal one, two, three. Uh, but 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 it's evident that God did not respond initially when Paul went to Him. Uh uh, because if God responded the first time, Paul would not have to have to go again. He would not have to go again. He would not have to go. Again. But but it says that Paul saw God on several occasions about the same infirmity he saw god on saw god on several occasions about the same infirmity so don't let nobody trick you in saying oh god heard you all you gotta do is pray the one time he heard you the first time but did you did, but did you hear from him you don't stop until you hear from God I believe it was Jacob that wrestled with the angel he said he wasn't gonna let go until he until he sees something till he receives something don't let go until you receive something don't, don't let go until you hear from God don't don't let go until God responds so so Paul right here displays to us that in times of trouble, we can seek God as often as it takes. Why? Because in Philippians 4 and 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving. Not complaining, with thanksgiving. Not in anger, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Come on here, church. We can go boldly to the throne of grace. We don't have we don't have to go to anybody else anymore. We can go boldly to God and let him know what's going on inside of us, outside of us, around us. Paul went to God as often as he felt necessary. He says, uh, he saw God three times. So, so don't let nobody tell you, you, you can't go to God over and over again. Because let me tell you, Paul wasn't the only one. In fact, in Mark chapters 14, verses 39 to 41, we see Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. When he sees the suffering, the agony. Paul was in agony, the agony that awaited him. And the Bible declares that he sought the Lord three times to remove what he was going to go through away. Which means he asked God the first time and God didn't respond. He asked God again and God didn't respond. But he didn't stop asking because he didn't hear from God. Don't stop asking because you don't hear from God. Don't stop asking because you think God is tired of, hear of hearing you. Don't stop. Yes, Shana. Pray without ceasing. Did he not tell us that? Did he not? The, 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 Paul was praying in such a, a, a manner that we see what fervent prayer looks like. No, I'm, I may not be getting the answer right now. No, I don't hear the thing. No, I'm, I'm, I don't hear it. I'm not hearing God, but don't stop. 
don't stop. Don't don't stop. Because Paul continued. He continued. He continued. He continued in passionate prayer over whatever it was he was going through. And even though he didn't receive an answer for God, it did not stop him. When we're really going through and we turn to God in prayer, it is often we're doing it because we're trying to find some relief. Paul was trying to find some relief. If you're trying to find some relief and you don't get it, you don't want to stop. It's like you got a headache. And yeah, yep, yep. Keep on knocking, Elder Council. Keep on knocking until you get an answer. So it's like when you got a headache. You you try to keep you you try to go through all the remedies you go through until you get some relief from that pressure. You try to do all types of things to get some relief from that pre pressure. So when we go to God in fervent prayer and don't receive an answer, and it causes us to be to become be to become concerned. And I'm quite sure Paul was in this in this. In, in this state of mind too, it causes us to become co concerned to whether God is actually hearing us. And when we began to think about whether or not God is hearing us, do you know that it caused additional suffering and multiple and, and multiple dimensions of that trial? Let me let me point something out to this. Let me tell, there's three dimensions that it it impacts. One, we have a physical dimension. And Paul, Paul's physical dimension was the thorn in his flesh. Our physical dimension is whatever that circumstance is, whatever that situation is, whatever that crisis is, whatever that infirmity is. Whatever it is, that is our physical dimension. Then the second dimension, we have a mental dimension. For Paul, it was, it was a messenger from Satan. Like us. It's those thoughts in our mind. God's not hearing me. God doesn't care about me. Why am I going through this? Why me? What did I do? Did I mess up? Did I sin? Did I? Yeah. Yeah, our mind, we start to think things. And then there's a third dimension. We have a spiritual dimension. And for Paul, this was unanswered prayer. Like Paul, we too begin to, to doubt whether or not God is going to answer us. Like Paul, we too began to doubt whether or not God heard us. We began to doubt our relationship with God. We began to doubt our salvation. We began to doubt our walk with God. We began to doubt some things. So believe it or not, even in all of that, God had a response. Let me tell you something. You, you haven't? gotten the answer you you haven't heard from god but can i tell you god has a response and oftentimes it's not what we initially hoped for or expected however god still has a response for us paul got a response from god and it probably wasn't what he was looking for. He probably was looking for deliverance he probably was looking for total healing he probably was looking for god to do that for him but that's not what he got. But he did get what he needed. He, he got what he needed. And we're going to talk about it. it he, he got grace. He, he, he got grace. Because God said, um, he, he got grace. Because in that ninth verse, God began to respond. After, after Paul's many repeated, re repeated prayers, God responded. And he said, my grace. Is all you need. He's, he responded to Paul. Instead of removing the situation or the circumstances from our lives. God will continue to give us grace. He will continue to give us grace. The grace of God gives us. The grace that God gives us is adequate to meet every need. Not one. Not just what you're going through in that moment. No, every need. Instead of removing the things from our lives, God uses, he, he gives us through his grace, he strengthens, strengthens us under it, in it. 
It is through these weak moments in our lives that God shows his strength. Do you know why we have to? We're not exempt from the sufferings in this world. Scripture says we are in this world, but not of this world. And being in this world, we're still going to be impacted by COVID-19. We're still going to be impacted by other viruses or other earthly illnesses. We're still going to be impacted by pestilence. We're still going to be impacted by those who don't like us. We're still going to be impacted by them. We're still, we're not exempt from hurricanes, tornadoes. Floods, tsunamis, earthquakes. We're not exempt. But God's grace is enough to strengthen us under it. So, so, so what, what I found out in this is we must trust that God's grace is sufficient. We must trust that God's grace is adequate. We have we have to make it up in our mind because you know we we don't have to accept God's grace. We don't have to accept it. We can doubt God. Y you do know that, right? We can doubt God, but that wasn't the case here. Instead of doubting God, we 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 must trust that God's grace is all we need. All we need. There are so many, and I'm, I'm, and and by no wise am I downplaying federal aid or 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 state aid or anything of the nature. By all means, necessary, absolutely not. Thank God for provision. However, there are those who are dependent on that, and if. You're paying attention. There are some people so wrapped up in this second stimulus check that that's all they can focus on, not realizing that God is all you need. Whether you get a second stimulus check that you're going to spend in 30 minutes anyway, after it's gone, he's still there. Yeah. We have to trust we have to trust. We have to make it up in our mind that God is adequate, that his grace is adequate, that his forgiveness towards us is all that we need. Do you know that when you come to understand that you are forgiven, come on, that you are truly, unconditionally, wholeheartedly forgiven to the point that he gave his one and only son, when you understand that, there is no possible way. There is no possible way that you should have a desire for anything else. Nothing can compare to him. Nothing amounts to him. Nothing equates to him. Nothing is enough. In this earth, we are always unsatisfied. But in him, we are satisfied. Because his grace is all we need. So he says, My power works best in your weakness. My pow power works best in your weakness. Weakness. We will and never be able to experience God's strength until we are honest with ourselves and be able to face the realities of our weaknesses. Yeah, you super saint. Yeah, you Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, speaking in tongue, running up and down the aisle. Yeah, you got weaknesses. I have weaknesses. And until we are, are able to come to the realities and be honest about those weaknesses, we'll never be able to experience the strength of God. Yeah, do you know God already knows? He, he, he factored all of that in the equation before we ever was. He already knows how weak we are. That's why he needed to, that's why Jesus had to come because he knew we couldn't do it. He knew we didn't, we weren't strong enough. 
We are not strong enough. We're not strong enough. So, he says, in, in your weakness, and my power is best in your weakness. It is, in, it is in times like we are in today. Yep, right here. Today. This moment. This very second. This very second. It is times like this that we need to trust God's grace. We need to trust God's grace. Let me share something with you. I've been out of work for two weeks now. Let me show you. See, I don't know if you can see this. I was at work and I um I cut a nerve at work and I had to have hand surgery. And you know, at one point in my life, I would have been frantic about where financial provision was coming from. I would I would have been losing my everlasting mind. Losing it about that paycheck. Just mm -mm, would have been losing it. But I didn't even think about where the money was coming from. I, I, I didn't. I, 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 I didn't know what was going to. I trust God. And when my mind locked in to Jehovah Jireh, he reminded me of insurance policies I had taken out for accident insurance. He reminded me that my job was going to. He, he took care of me. He, he is still taking care of me. While I'm in the healing process. You know what? I can testify. Did it feel good? Does it feel good at the moment? Absolutely not. But I can tell you that God is all I need. Because he is meeting every need. Nothing lacking. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing. Nothing. So it is in times like this. Yeah, like this. That people need to know who you serve. They need to know who, who got your back. They need to know who's holding you up. So Paul wasn't using the 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 explaining of this vision to draw attention to himself, but he was using it that his audience would be captivated on Jesus the Christ. Let me tell you. God's grace can meet our needs. You know why? Because it's available all the time. Not sometimes, not two hours out of day, but it is available all the time. God's grace can meet our needs because his grace is an expression of his acceptance and his pleasure in us. He's pleased in you. God accepts you. He takes pleasure in you. God's grace can meet our need because it is the very strength of God. Do you know there are there are so many times when I am facing some difficult situations, I got to make some difficult decisions and I ask God to grace me for that. I'm I'm simply just asking him to give me strength. I'm asking him to strengthen me. There's times where I'm doing things around the house that I used to do uh, without a second thought. Like, I mean, it was like second nature, some of the physical things I used to be able to do. But now some of those very things, I have to ask God's grace to accomplish them. Do you know his grace is available to you? Do you, do you know he wants to extend his grace? Do you know he wants you to experience his grace? Paul says this. When he says, when he when he said to Paul, he says, My grace is sufficient. He said, in this verse, he said, My grace is sufficient to you. He didn't say, My grace is sufficient to Paul. He said, My grace is sufficient to you because you, the reader, he wants you to know that his grace. Is for you. He didn't limit his grace. God didn't didn't limit his favor and his love. It is in his grace that he demonstrates his favor and his love. And because he's pleased by us, he's more than willing. He's well able. Do you know his grace is right now? In this very moment? His grace 
is for little old me. His grace is for Lashilia. His grace is for Rosetta. His grace is for Elder Council. His grace is it is it, 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 for Elder Treywood. His grace is for Shada Johnson. His grace is for Joy Morrison. His grace, his grace, his grace, his grace is for you. Yeah. Yeah, he was talking to you. So God didn't put a limitation on who would be beneficiaries of his grace. He said, whosoever will, let him come. The grace of our crucified, risen, triumphant Savior, the Lord of all glory, is surely su is sufficient. If it's sufficient for Paul, I promise you it's sufficient for us. If, if it was sufficient for Paul, remember his grace is right now. It's still sufficient for us. So like Paul, we can take pleasure and boast. And when I say boast, I mean testify. Hi, ah, yes, God, testify, testify in our trials, our infirmities, whatever it is we are going through so that the power of Christ may rest upon us. Church. Mm -mm. This, no, this ain't the time. This ain't the time. This ain't the time. You know why? What we should be professing out of our mouth like Paul says. When I am weak, then I am strong. You may not have all of what you, you need financially. But my Bible says, um, let the poor say that I am rich. Let the weak say that I am strong. It's not in you. It's in God's grace. Because he loves us that much. He loves us that much. That he is willing to supply. Not all, not some, but all of our needs. You know why? According to his riches and glory. You know why? Because he says you're worth it. He says you are worth it. You are worth it. You're worth it. I promise you. I, if I never ever say another true word out of my mouth, God says you're worth it. You're still worth it. After all of that, you're still worth it. Yep, after all of that, you're still worth it. So Father, we thank you now for your grace. God, we thank you now for your mercy. God, we thank you for your never ending love for us. We thank you for Jesus the Christ. God, we thank you that we have a savior who identifies. And because he knows our weaknesses, it is through that he's able to give us strength. God, we thank you that we can come boldly to you. We thank you that we can pray we thank you that you are not annoyed by us coming to you over and over and over again. God, we thank you that even in those moments, huh, even in those moments when it feels like you are so far away that you are nigh, God, even in those moments where it feels like you have left us, you have not abandoned us, God, even in, those, in that moment when our spirits seem to be doubting, you have not forsaken us. Because you said that you would never do these things. You, you said that you will be there always, even until the end of the earth. And the earth isn't going anywhere. The world is, the system of things is, but you created the earth for your great pleasure. And you're going to restore things. So God, we thank you for upholding us in our moment of weakness. And God, I pray that everyone on this live tonight and all those who will, 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 will do the replay, God I, God, I pray that it will touch in such a way that we will trust you in every moment, every circumstance, every situation, that we don't forget that you love us. You accepted us and you take great pleasure in us. Help us to ever be reminded when the enemy tries to whisper in our ear. 
that we're less than who you called us to be. Help us to remember who you are in us. God, help us to know that we are the beloved. Help us to remember that we are your sons and your daughter. Help us to, be, to remember that we are royalty. We are chosen in the name of Jesus. So God, I pray for those who are yet still suffering due to COVID-19. God, I pray for the bereaved families. God, I pray for those who are locked up in mental institutions. God, I pray for those who are incarcerated. God, I pray for those who are on the front line. God, I pray for the teachers who are going back to school. God, I pray for the students who are resuming school. I pray for the teachers who are pre uh, preparing education online. I pray for the students who are receiving their education online. God, I pray for our nation. God, I pray for the leadership of our nation. God, I pray because you said the government are, uh, is upon your shoulders. God, I know that you're in control of all things. So God, in this hour, your grace be upon us all in Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in. I'll be back here, Lord's will, next uh, Wednesday at 6 o'clock Central Time, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. I'll be conducting Bible study for the month of August um, on behalf of my leader, who I love ever so dearly, Bishop Lashelia Garrett and my overseer, Derek Garrett. Thank God for the spiritual covering that he has given on to me. I don't know what nobody else got, but I know what I got, okay? And I, I honor what I have. I value what I have. Um, if you are not aware, my bishop, yeah, the one and only Lashelia Garrett has published an international writing, Sarai's Song. It is available on Amazon. It's S-A-R-I apostrophe S Song. It's available on Amazon. It is a good read. I have my copy. Go get yours. I promise you. Um, you will indulge. It's one of those books where you might want to snuggle up a little bit because you really get intense at times. Um, you might go through the whole book um, in one day, but I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Join us on Sunday. Um, on Sunday mornings, we have E-Church um, Covenant, the same um, Covenant Connection, our church's Facebook page at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, join us for worship. You know what? I, I, I said last week, the church has stood up so tall in this COVID-19 hour. I am seeing the church perform on a level that I have not seen the church perform ever. And I haven't been saved all my life, but I've been saved enough of my life that I can say that if it was ever a time that I am, I am ecstatic about the response, the actions of the church it is now the gospel hey Petey Petey Hines oh my god Carol Andrews oh my goodness Petey I ain't I ever heard from you and forever go back and watch the replay Petey um your sister's up here too um man I'm I'm, I'm it, it, the church is alive and well and you know what guess where it's not in the building. It's not in the building. So for all the those who think church is the building. Ooh. Sorry. It's not you the church. The church is alive and well. And I have never seen so much gospel go forth. Like I'm seeing in this hour. I'm not. I'm, I mean people are being saved. Out of a building. Come on. People are being saved. Out of a building. God is working miracles out of the building. Come on, church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The church is alive and well. And let me tell you, it is growing at a rapid pace. You know why? Because God said it was his will that none should perish, but that all come to an act of repentance. Do you know that God knows that social media is an eye catcher? He's an intelligent God. He know we're going to be glued to them phones and them iPads and them computers and all this technology. It's not the devil's tool unless we give it to him. You know, we can use it for the advancement of the kingdom and God's doing just that in this hour. So even though we can't be in a building, it has not stopped the church. The church is growing. 
Yes, yes, it is growing. So thank you all. I'll be back here uh, Wednesday night, Lord willing, like I said. Um, just have a wonderful night. God bless you all. Good night.